it starts out as something simple, simple changes. It's normal to see these things and to brush them off, to accept them and to live with them. My name's Michael McMullen and for me, from the winter to the spring of 2014, all of these symptoms developed. There was the extreme thirst, the blurred vision, the weight loss, and I went from the low 200s to the mid 140s in a matter of months, and this began to scare me, and rightfully so. At the end of the spring of that year, my body gave out, and I don't remember anything that happened for the next 24 hours. All the signs were there, but I ignored them, and I wish I hadn't. I simply brushed them off until it was too late. But the question is, what now? I, for one, want to learn about this condition that took over my life in a matter of months. Diabetes. Of course, I'm really new to all of this, so it would probably be best to leave the description of the disease itself to the experts. When I was first diagnosed, I was taken to and learned from the experts at the Memorial Health University Medical Center in Savannah, Georgia. Well, diabetes is, an is the pancreas, which is an organ in your body that secretes the hormone insulin. It's impaired and it's not producing enough insulin to help you convert the carbohydrates, which are sugars, starches that you eat into fuel, into energy. Type 1 means that your pancreas does not produce any insulin. So you're required to have insulin from the outside. You have to have an injection. So um, type 2 is different. Your pancreas is producing some insulin, but just not enough. Or there's some insulin resistance going on. You can be tired when your blood sugar is high. You can have a change in vision. Increased thirst. You can be very thirsty when your blood sugar is high. And you're also then going to the bathroom often. An elevated blood sugar can cause unexplained weight loss when you're not trying to lose weight. Large portions of sugar in your diet consistently throughout the day, um, which can be linked to obesity. And obesity is linked to type 2 diabetes. Uh, usually the risk factors that are uh, present for diabetes usually are family, genetic, uh, displacement, um, obesity is another risk, and certain racial ethnicities also increases your risk. Eating sugar does not cause you to have diabetes. People that have been diagnosed with diabetes for 50 years remember when there was no blood testing equipment, no glucometer. The technology has evolved into where we can have insulin pumps that are a delivery device to deliver that insulin. We have uh, devices called continuing glucose monitoring systems where you can actually see what your blood glucose level is on a monitor throughout the day. Diabetes is primarily controlled by the patient. You decide on whether or not you're gonna get physical activity to help you burn that excess sugar. You decide on whether or not you're going to eat the proper amount of carbohydrates. Um, and you decide on whether or not you're going to take your medication properly, and you decide on whether or not you're gonna monitor your blood sugar. So now I know what diabetes is and how it affects me, but how does it affect my everyday life? As a student, my schedule is gonna change last minute, and that can be detrimental to me, especially as a newly diagnosed diabetic. But I'm not the only person with diabetes. I knew diabetics before I was diagnosed, and I'm sure there are diabetics at my school. The question is, how do they manage it and how do they get along with their daily lives? When you discover you have diabetes, it's, you know, your body goes through a huge change. So, I mean, in a span of two weeks, I had lost probably about 20 pounds. I just didn't really understand all those medical, di medical responsibilities. So, I sort of neglected my diabetes. The transition for me was mainly from uh, shots to the uh, insulin pump which is right here. So I think a big transition for me was just being okay with the idea of people knowing I had diabetes. You know, people would come up, you know, you look so thin, you look, you know, what, what happened, what's going on? And you get that little hesitation of, you know, do you wanna tell people you're diabetic? Do you not? Uh, how are they gonna react to it? I eventually got a con better control of my uh, diabetes, my 
blood sugars. And I made a lot of friends along the way who helped me out and made it a lot easier on me. It's all about diet. It's about maintaining control. It's about making sure that you know, you're doing okay. I know that a lot of people think that only bigger people get diabetes, but a lot of people get it when they're like born or even if they're like stick skinny, they can still get it. I just want people to know that um, to just take care of their health and not think that diabetes is something that you can take for granted because once you have it, it's very serious. It's a lot of work, but I think that with, with the help of my friends and family who are always supporting me and always helping me control my blood sugars and making sure it's right every time, I think that's really what makes it so, so awesome. Since I was diagnosed seven years ago, I actually didn't start really taking care of myself until last year. And so I decided, even though I hated diabetes for so long, I decided why not just love it if it's a part of me. So I decided to get this tattoo. It says type one diabetes on it. Now it's you can have literally control your blood sugar 24 seven, you know, all that. So technology has made it incredible. So with these advances in technologies making it easier to go day to day, it really should be no problem for me to live with diabetes. In fact, I'm seeing that many people who have diabetes can live fuller lives than those who don't have the disease. They can also work to form communities locally and nationally, such as with the American Diabetes Association, which regularly works to raise awareness and raise funds to eventually find a cure for the disease, such as with the recent walk that happened in my town of Savannah, Georgia. Well, this year will mark 25 years for me with type 1 diabetes. You can think you have it down, and then something changes and your blood sugars get off base again. In December, I'll have lived with diabetes for 58 years, which is not a record, but it's coming pretty close. I'd have to say the biggest difficulty in living with diabetes was in the early years because a lot of the technology that's available to us now to help manage diabetes wasn't available then. For me, I've had it for two years, and the difficulty when I first had it, I had big needles and I didn't like it. I've had it since I was 21 months, and I think it's so difficult that you have to check your sugar every day. Well, you just learn to, to, to try to cope with it and try to beat it as best you can. You, you go through your growing pains from your psychological, your sorrow, your hate, your frustration, all the way up to the point where it's kind of now or never. And if you don't get adjusted to it, you're, you're gonna be struggling with the disease. It becomes routine. You see food, you see numbers before you see your actual food. I've learned to live with it, and so it's not an issue anymore. Well, it, with events such as this, and everybody come together to, to support a good cause. I think it brings everybody together. It's our own kind of community. You see the hats, and you see the people out here for you, walking for you, and raising money to have find research. It's incredible. It makes everyone more aware of what we go through every day. When I was young, I didn't even know anybody else with diabetes, but people aren't hiding it and ashamed of it and keeping it from their friends anymore. They wear red shirts and walk around the park with it. It's a hard disease to manage. It's daily, daily fight, counting everything you eat. Just try to be more understanding of people who do have it and realize that if our sugar drops, we can go critical very quickly. I don't think people appreciate what a, a risk and a danger diabetes is. And although we have insulin and sometimes people think of that as a cure for diabetes, it's not. I mean, you have to do a lot of things differently than other people to live healthily with diabetes. I would say that it's important to your life because you have to get shots and you have to get insulin or you can become very sick. That just because I'm diabetic doesn't mean I can't have sugar sores. I will not let it hold me back. I'm a survivor and I will survive. Fear of failure is one of my biggest challenges of life and I'm not going to let it conquer me. You own it, you live it, you educate, you it becomes you. I feel like I'm stronger than diabetes. I won't let anything take over my life. And I will not be held back by it. In just the short amount of time that I've been diagnosed, I've learned more about types 1 and type 2 than I ever knew. And it's amazing seeing people in my peer group and the community of diabetics in general living and excelling with this disease. And in the end, this is a learning experience for me. I know I'm going to learn a lot more in the near future, but for now, I'm equipped with the knowledge of diabetes that I need.
There are plenty of people who live with this disease, and there are plenty who live with normal and even exceptional lives, and I certainly don't plan to be an exception.